Elk are one of the most majestic herbivores on the North American landscape. A close relative of deer, moose, and caribou, they can grow in excess of a thousand pounds in size. West Virginia University reported last week that the elk are making a comeback in the mountain state, and researchers are studying the genetics of the population to help maintain the health of the herd. In 2016, elk were reintroduced to West Virginia from populations in Kentucky and Arizona. While plentiful across the continent, the animals had disappeared from the state in the late 1800s due to hunting and timbering. 39 elk were transported from Kentucky's Land Between the Lakes National Recreation Center. West Virginia is hoping to see its population thrive in a similar manner to this herd's recent past. The Kentucky population was a reintroduction that took place around 2000, said WVU graduate student Adam Cook. And they're the poster child for elk reintroductions in the East because they brought in 1,500 elk from six different states. They went for the quantity and diversity approach, which has worked very well, and they've got over 10,000 now. To provide diversity, another 60 elk were brought in from an Arizona herd. However, transporting such large and wild animals is difficult, and unfortunately, 14 of the Arizona elk died due to capture stress and a parasitic brainworm. To improve the odds of reintroduction success, researchers are focusing on the genetic diversity of both groups. Genetic diversity is crucial for the future sustainability of these populations. Without it, risks include inbreeding, loss of fitness, and population decline. Conserving genetic diversity is especially important in small populations. In addition to genetic diversity, researchers are examining adaptive differences between the two subspecies. The elk from Kentucky are Manitoban elk, while the ones from Arizona are Rocky Mountain elk. These differences could impact their fitness in the new West Virginia environment. Adaptive differences can manifest in physical characteristics such as body and antler size, which influence mating success and gene transmission to the next generation. The study is conducted in collaboration with the West Virginia Division of Natural Resources and aims to identify individuals or groups best suited for future relocations, as animals with better adaptations have a higher chance of success when moved. While the new herd faces threats from predation, mostly on calves by coyotes and black bears, the brainworm has caused a higher mortality rate. White-tailed deer transmit the parasite but are not affected by it, while elk often succumb to the infection. Researchers are investigating if there is a genetic consistency among elk that have died from brainworm. This adaptation, though unfavorable, could help determine which animals are more likely to die from brainworm, informing future reintroductions. Parentage analysis is another key aspect of the project. Researchers aim to identify both parents of all 50 elk born in West Virginia since the reintroduction. This will help determine if members of the two source populations are mating with each other and if elk from Kentucky are crossing the border to breed with West Virginia elk. The behavior of these populations remains uncertain. In other locations, such as the Smoky Mountains, elk from separate states are not breeding, while in some areas, they are mixing. The outcome in West Virginia is yet to be seen. Elk populations have always existed west of the Mississippi and into Canada. Early restoration efforts in the east failed due to the lack of monitoring. Now, with advanced research, this project is seen as a vital step in restoring elk in the east. The process is essential to determine if a reintroduction is successful and to ensure the continued health and sustainability of this elk population. West Virginia is known for its mountainous, untamed landscapes. And if the elk project is successful, it will only increase the diversity of wildlife and the offerings for those who like to venture into the hills and are lucky enough to catch a glimpse of these new arrivals. Don't stop here. Find out more. Visit the links in the description below for more in-depth information on the stories presented in this video.